Let's okay. move to French Open now. Yeah. We've got two major upsets on day three. And talking about David Ferrer and, of course, Nick Kyrgios, both of them are out of the French Open. But mm. then, talk about uh, Feliciano Lopez. I mean, this is a guy you feel, okay, someday he will win a Grand Slam. But from all indication, when you're having a player like that, uh, sometimes he's on, sometimes he's off. But on this day against David Ferrer, he was pretty on court. And he won in five sets, seven, five. Six three five seven six four four six and Jeremy Shadi and Kenny Shikori. Kenny Shikori winning six three six love and seven six. Andy Murray and Martin Cleason. This was actually a tough game for him. Yes, it was. But you know, Andy Murray, he knows what to do after losing the opening set. He felt okay. This is French Open. This mm. is what I've never won, and he hasn't had a good season. Somehow he was able to bounce back, winning Four the sets. final three sets. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, what a way. That's uh, champions, uh, champion mentality yeah. for you. When you lose the first set, you bounce back straight away, and you win the next uh, uh, three sets, 6 to 6 to uh, 7 6. Actually, that final set was a very tough one yeah. because he had to come back for 1 4 uh, down, down. Yeah, to take that match against uh, Martin Cleason. But up next, for Andy Murray is um, one Martin Del Potro. Yeah, that's the guy, oh, you know, he had defeated him already <laughs> this year. But at the Olympics also, mm. he defeated him. But one Martin Del Potro got a better one against him uh, this year. Then Fernando Verdasco, he's also playing well. He won his game against Pear Hooks Herbert, 6-3, 3-6, 4-6, 6-3. Six three. That's how that one ended. And of course, you have a Nicolas Amagro and Juan Martin the Porto, the guy you talked about that will mm. be facing Andy Murray. He won his own uh, uh, in a, a very convincing way. Six three six one. And of course, uh, the final result. That's not the way it ended. But Stan Vavrinka and uh, the Ooh, local of that's the, the guy program. usually they give him a kind of a tough time. But this time around, Stan honestly he knew tough what game. to do. It was tough for him, but then he pulled through. He survived that. Yeah, in three sets as well. Too. So uh, Stan Vavrinka is still going strong. And today I'll get to see the likes of uh, Rafael Nadal, King of Clay. I'll get to see Novak uh, Djokovic and defending champion uh, in action as well. So, and in the ladies, um, in the women's singles, uh, Cecilia. Yeah, we haven't had much of upset recently. Mm. But we have Agnes Gara and Waska got a good one over Alice in Van Uchek. Yeah. Six, seven, six, two, six, six, three. It ended. And Tayana Maria and Simona Halep, six, four, six, three. And that was also a clinical one. Are you are you ready to uh, to um, you know just say Simona Alep is the favorite uh, for the French Open? Yeah, she is year. because if, you, if you check, yeah, she is. I mean, she she has been playing good tennis. She okay. hasn't really struggled. So the, the big girls that we felt okay will get a good one. Not looking good for them. Okay, we'll find out. <laughs> now, just a reminder of the result between uh, yeah. Stan Vavrinka and uh, Dugo Polo. It was six four seven six seven five. That one ended, so he struggled a bit, but then he was able to get it through. Yes, so that's it for the French Open. Um, action will continue today. I will get to see Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic in action. Let's talk about still on tennis, but this time on the table, and um, not a very good day for Africa. Uh, in general, as a whole, at uh, the World Championships in Dusseldorf, Germany, because uh, the last two men, stand, men standing, uh, Arnold Quadri and Omar Sar of Egypt, they have been shown the exit door. They have been knocked out of that particular championship, Cecilia. Um, it hasn't come as a surprise to you, yeah. or to me. Mm, yeah, a surprise for um, Quadri. Quadri, I don't know, Quadri, because mm. he was facing a guy from Denmark. If that's not going to trouble him. Yeah. You know, we understand the Asians are so good. Sometimes so if you, you, any, if you meet but anyone other European than countries. really, no, because he has been good against them. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt he should have done better, and the manner in which he lost. Oh, no. I mean, he, he didn't win a game. Win a game at all. So it was four sets Oof. to love, so that wasn't cool. I mean, Omasa is also out, but Omasa won two games, you know, before, you know, he exited the tournament. So that's the difference between two, these two guys. When you're having but they both out. <laughs> bottom line, I mean, so it was all this moral, moral victory it doesn't really count. They're out of the competition and they're on the way uh, home. And uh, not a very good one for us. But... Um, it's good experience for these guys. Uh, we know Africa still has a long way to go yeah. when it comes uh, to uh, world table tennis. Yeah, they have a long way to go. And that's what Aruna Kodre, uh, Dr. Shekun Teriola has been talking about. That they need actually a lot of coaches to actually help the youngsters and also the big time players for them to play at a very, very top level. Let's listen to him now.
Well, playing World Championship is very, very important for all players because uh, you have to meet a lot of players from the, throughout the whole world. And the atmosphere is very good. Apart from the Olympics, the World Championship is the, the second best in table tennis. The Olympics is the, best, is the first, but World Championship also is very important because uh, everybody, a lot of players from different countries, you need to meet them, you need to play with them, you know, make friends and, and, uh, and have fun. You just you have to work very hard for to more perform. I mean, in the past, we performed more than this in the past, but right now, it's not compared for the past performance, it's not slow. Because the problem the African have is, you know, the, the table tennis is the lack of coach, you know. Uh, that's the problem in Africa. There are many countries lack of coach in Africa. They are, right now, let's like say the Egypt, they are, they are well organized about talking about the coaching aspect, so that's why they, they improve a lot. So. So right now it's going to it's very difficult for African to be more players, you know, in top form because uh, we don't have the coach, you know, to you know to train the the players, the young ones, especially the young ones. So the African they need to change the system, you know, they need to focus, you know, to have the good coach, you know, so that to develop table tennis in Africa. Because I believe if the African have the opportunity like the European they have, you know. Like the federation that they're taking care of them, like the coaches. I believe Africa is going to be more better than the European, except from the Asian, because because the African we have what they call discipline. It's very very important in sport. You now the young one, they have so disciplined. You know, it's easy to control them. But in Europe, it's not easy to control the young one. You know, it's a rumor, but it's true because I'm trying to you know work very hard to play in Japan, uh, in Tokyo, because. I want to try it. I'm still having fun. I'm enjoying the game. So I'm still playing very, very well. So why I want to retire? I just want to try my best maybe to, to qualify. Uh, it's possible. I believe it's possible. But I just need to work very hard. You know. Thank you. 